All right, let's get into what I will share with you today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for the privilege to stand behind this holy desk and speak to your holy, chosen, blood-washed, and even some that are not yet blood-washed people. I pray, God, that you would sanctify me by the power of the Holy Spirit. And God, you would help us to hear from you today. Holy Spirit, capture my mind, my thinking, my speech. You speak, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you work. Satan, we rebuke you. Every plan, every scheme, every distraction, every strategy, we stand against it now in Jesus' name. Father, let your anointing for this moment be effective in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? I'm going to do what I did when I read this. When he had spit, and I looked, did he say S-P-I-T? When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Brother Hector, we're always happy to have you in church, huh? I know you don't get to come as often, so. Our topic is Divine Reset, How to Finish Well. So we are at the end of our anniversary month, and I thought this would be fitting. Divine Reset, and as most of you know, when it comes to September, I begin to pivot to shift towards the new year and, and, and sort of prepare us for where the Lord is, is leading us. So Divine Reset, how to finish well. Divine Reset, how to finish well. The God of our Bible finishes what he starts. All throughout scripture, God has never done anything fractionally or partially. God finishes what he starts, and God only starts what he intends to finish. Finishing is not just what God does. A finisher is who God is. As a matter of fact, I submit to you that incompletion agitates and irritates God. When God created this world, he finished what he started. He brought the walls of Jericho all the way down. Not halfway, all the way down. When he parted the Red Sea, he brought all of them through. When Jesus turned water into wine, he finished the process. The wine was not watery wine. Jesus is a finisher. And so this revelation that God finishes what he starts should revolutionize how we think about the delays and the denials in our lives. In other words, we should not panic or become anxious. If God started it, God will finish it. If God led you to start the business, God will help you run the business. If God blessed you with the children, God will help you raise those children. If God brought you to one level, God will take you to another level. Are you following me? I'm saying to us that God is committed to finishing. Why, why do I need you to hear this? Because the God you believe is the God you experience. The God you believe is the God you experience. If you believe you got to help God out, then you will not experience the power and the might of God leading you through all the way. You see, your perception of God affects your experiences with God. Your experience with God will be no greater than your revelation of God. So since God finishes what he starts, the question is, do you believe that God will finish what he starts? Because it's a fact. He finishes what he starts. The question is, do we believe that God will finish what he starts? 
The problem is we don't like the way he finishes it. So we stop believing. But he says, I got a plan. Do you have faith to trust God to finish what he started? The Bible tells us in verse 22 of Mark chapter 8 that we just read. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. I want to look at blindness. They are begging Jesus to simply touch this blind man. I don't know if you've ever been like that in your life where, where your prayer and your worship and your lifestyle, even your giving, even your serving is like you begging God, please. Have you ever been there? God, please. You, you may not say it, but, but you, you, you know in your heart, God, please, I beg you touch me some of us actually say it as a matter of fact some of our addictions some of our unhealthy behaviors is actually us crying out for a touch from god this man was blind physically but i submit to you that in scripture blindness is a metaphor for lack of vision because some people are not physically blind, but some people lack vision. I submit to you, not just some, but many people nowadays lack vision. How many people, go? We, we're get, you guys are getting ready to go back to school, going to school with no vision. Spend, spending thousands of dollars and hours and hours of, of work that you're going to put into it, but no vision. And, and I want you to understand that there is more to school than a degree at the end. Hello. We're talking about how to finish well, but I'm saying to you that you will not end well if you don't have a vision. Your life will not end well if you don't have a vision. Your marriage will not end well if you don't have a vision. So what is vision? What is vision? Vision is a picture of God's preferred future for your life. Vision is a picture. Now, I know there are inspirational people who tell you it's what you create. Here's what we believe as Christians. Vision is a picture of God's preferred future for your life. God has a preferred future for your life. Vision, in other words, is a sneak preview of a coming attraction. I wish we would all see ourselves as we, we, this is a movie. And God is doing something wonderful. And people get to see and enjoy and be blessed by what God is doing in us. Vision is that sneak preview of a coming attraction. Have you ever seen the trailer to a movie? It has not yet been released, but you know, based on what you have seen, my goodness, you know that it's going to be good. You haven't seen the whole thing, but you've seen enough to know that it will be good. You've seen enough to know that it will be exceedingly and abundantly above all you will ask or think. And I wish some of us would tap into God's vision for our lives right now and see, whilst I see some things that I don't like, let God show you some things that will tell you and will prove to you and will convince you that what he has in store is going to be exceedingly and abundantly above all you will ask or think get god's vision for your life not yours some people have never lived their lives with vision never some people just live life with goals there is more a, a vision is more than just getting out of debt what do you do after debt getting out of debt a vision is about more than just getting married what do you do after you're married a vision is about more than just having the children you remember you got to raise them think about it people are living life and never knowing why they are alive if you are alive, there's a reason why you're alive. It's more than just sucking in and breathing out air and eating food and enjoying life and having passions and possessions and getting into high positions. There is more to life. The Bible says without vision, people what? Perish. Without vision, what does that mean? It means that without vision, you have no markers to make decisions. We, 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 we have vision as a church. And so therefore then sometimes if somebody says, can we do this or do that? I don't quickly say yes. I got to check the vision. Does it line up with the vision? 
If it doesn't line up with the vision, then I'm letting you influence what God wants to do. And I can't expect God to make provision when it's your vision. But if I stick to his vision, then he'll certainly make provision for his vision. And so most of us, we get out of God's vision for our lives. That's why you're working so hard to make provision. It's your vision, not God's. It's not that God didn't want to bless you with a house. It's just that you wanted it right now. I don't have to... Listen, listen, I'm not trying to necessarily provoke you, but I want you to understand. I remember one time I was younger. <laughs> wow, <laughs> tough crowd. Thank you. You're, you. you're saying younger, Pastor, you're still young. I, thank you so much. <laughs> but when I was younger, for whatever reason, driving in big vehicles just seemed cool. And... Um, <clears throat> I convinced my wife that we needed four by four, all wheel or whatever, a bigger truck, trailblazer. Don't ask me why, it just seemed like, I, I think my excuse was it's winter and you know, we were in Ottawa. Um, so, so I went, I mean, and we worked, I worked, well, we worked hard to get it, but we paid dearly to keep it. Am I making sense? repairs and it, it, I, I came to realize and you ever notice when God is trying to speak to you and you're like Satan oh man that car is broken again father in the name of Jesus I'm a tither I rebuke the devourer and God is like uh you you can almost sense God's like mm -mm, that 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 I'll help you just because you 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 know you call my name but this thing is costing you more you you know, and, and and but here's the thing it was my vision to get that vehicle for whatever reason, to satisfy my ego. I remember one day I had a glorious moment. We were on the road and something happened and everybody was stuck and couldn't go anywhere. And I had the big trailblazer and I just threw that thing in and cut through the... It was amazing. But I mean, it paid me dearly. I mean, I could have... Spent, you know, that extra, what, 30 minutes that I saved that I didn't have to stay stuck in traffic was not worth the amount of money that I spent. Am I, am I making sense? And, and I'm trying to show us, sometimes we, we it, you said, but it's just a car. It was a waste of money. post stewardship. So when you have God's vision for your life, you think differently, you plan differently, you spend differently. Because without vision, you have no markers to make decision. In other words, without vision, you do not know what to say yes to or no to. Without vision, you will not know where to turn or what turn to take if you don't know where you plan to end up. I'm saying that when your vision is clear, your decision making becomes clearer. I'm saying that when you have vision, a vision for your relational life, some choices will become easy. Part of the reason why you, 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 you're so heartbroken is, uh, and, and feel so, uh, you've been through so much emotional pain, part of the reason is because you didn't have a vision for your life. So everybody, to everybody who says, hey, you're like, hi, and you end up getting hurt. But when you have vision for your life and somebody says, hey, you say, boy, bye. You get what I'm saying? One translation says, without vision, people cast off restraint. Without vision, you have no marker to gauge your progression. If you don't know where you are going... How can you measure how close you are? Part of the reason why some folks are frustrated, you don't have vision, so you don't know how to measure it. You, you have, you're frustrated because you don't know where you're going, living life without vision, or you have set your own vision. So we find this man in our passage, and in my opinion, this man was not blind from birth. Why do I say that? Because in verse 25, the Bible says his sight was restored, restored. And when we preach, I want you to, you know, sometimes we preach prophetically. I want you to see some things here that God is saying, I want to do a restoration. The Bible says his sight was restored. He, 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 saw, he saw people, uh, if you notice, it also says, I believe that he wasn't blind from birth because it says he saw people like trees. Well, how did he know what trees look like unless he had seen trees before? 
So, so this man could represent someone who had vision for their life. Then something happened and they lost that vision. They lost that direction. It's possible that you have been pursuing something, believing for something, praying and planning for something. Then something happened that caused you to no longer see for your life what you once saw for your life. That's where some of us are today. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me try to show you. It's possible that age has affected your vision. I'm too old now, so I can't dream some things anymore. I can't see some things anymore. I am too old. I have more years uh, behind me than I have ahead of me. That's what some people think. Let me tell you something. What God wants to do in your life uh, is not limited by the season of life you're in. As a matter of fact, sometimes the best is reserved for last. And so, yeah, you may very well be uh, older, but let me tell you something. Being older is not a bad thing because being older could also mean that you're at that an age. You're at that age where God will bring your vision to pass. You know why? You've lived enough. You've wasted enough money. You've had enough relationship experience. You've tried enough jobs. You, I mean, you are just really clear on what you will and will not tolerate. Your heart is actually not ready for your blessing. So this could actually be a good time. Don't let age cause you to lose your vision. I hope you're hearing me. So, so age could affect your vision. It's possible that your mistakes has affected your vision. You thought, I've made so many mistakes. It's, 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 it's you know, sometimes you could believe uh, it, it's not possible for me because I don't deserve it. I've made too many mistakes. Let me tell you something. Listen carefully. Refuse to make your mistakes sovereign. Refuse to make... The, 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 only, the only sovereign one we know is God. So refuse to make your mistakes, your mishaps. And somebody says, Pastor, what if it's intentional? Listen to me carefully. Re hear the words that are coming out of, my, out of my mouth and read my lips if you can. Refuse to make your mistakes sovereign whether you did it or somebody else did it refuse to make your mistakes sovereign you cannot have simultaneous sovereignty in your life either god is sovereign or your mistakes are sovereign you choose both god and your mistakes cannot have the last word so so has has, has your mistakes uh, affected your vision is age affecting your 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 your, your vision Has, is, is failure affecting your vision has failure caused you to become spiritually and relationally and emotionally infected you know you've tried and you've tried and you've tried and it just never worked out so here's what happened to some people because of their failures or the mistakes or because of the age here's what happens they instead of living positively or progressively they begin to live protectively protective living i'm not even going to get my hopes up protective living I'm, I, 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 I won't try anymore i'm not going to believe anymore i've been disappointed too many times living protectively instead of progressively why because you'd rather be stuck and safe than live progressively and be vulnerable has 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 disease robbed you of your vision something robbed this man of his sight so so they bring him to jesus and and he's excited as a matter of fact, in, in today's world, he's excited. He, he, he would have said something like, it's about to be lit. He would have said something, no, no, not, not cool enough. So I, I'm thinking if he was alive today, he would have said something like, hashtag walls are coming down, hashtag watch me now, hashtag I'm about to see that paper and get me some of it. That's the perspective that I think this man was in. Somebody's thinking, yeah, pastor, hashtag is like yesterday. But, but you get the point. Okay, so he's excited. I, 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 I try to preach in a way that I get it. So, so sometimes, you know, it, you might just think, I don't get it. But understand how I'm reading this passage, okay? They bring, they bring him to Jesus, and he's heard all the things that Jesus could do. 
We've all been there, you know. Have you ever been to a prayer meeting or not a prayer meeting? You ever have it's like somebody's coming to town? I remember one time they said Maurice Sorello is coming to town, and when I watched TV, I mean, I thought, man, if I go wherever Maurice Sorello is, all my problems are over. So people are lining up and, and, and to see Maurice Sorello. Can you just imagine if you knew Jesus was coming to Shiloh? Like, I don't care how you feel, you'd be in church. Like, like you'd be the first to register. Like, we tell you, get on the wait list. Man, you'd be calling the office. Like, yo, I, I'm on the wait list, Pastor. I sent you an email, two texts, and I even dropped a note in the mailbox because I heard Jesus was going to be there. By the way, let me tell you something. He actually is here every Sunday. What's your problem? Why aren't you like you know, burning down the lines. Just saying. <laughs> it's because I'm tired. So, 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 but here's the thing, Brother Jerry. I'm reading this thing, and I'm like, this guy's excited. Jesus is about to do something. But I'm reading this, and the Bible says Jesus spits on him. Now, and I understand, I've read this, I know this, but because I have to preach, I'm like, um, Holy Spirit, like, how am I supposed to make sense of this? Jeez, you ever read something? And, and I know, I know some of you are just like, well, you jump to the commentary. I'm just reading the Bible, all right? And it says, Jesus spit on the man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Benny Hinn, Maurice Sorello, T.D. Jakes, I don't care. You show up in church, and I, I mean, I expected to connect with you and get a miracle. I stand in the line, I come to the front, and you spit on me? Yo. Like, I'm not thinking, oh, Holy Spirit. <laughs> so in my mind, this dude is expecting, and all his friends are like, it's about to be lit. It's going to happen. It's going down. And Jesus spits on him. And the dude must have been like, yo, that's nasty. But, but it's all right. It's all good. If you, you know, since you're Jesus, like, okay, I mean, there must be something to it. So, so, so ew, do your thing. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> and then after having you know i don't know if you say spit it on him or spat on him sorry jesus says to him can you see L like let's be real <laughs> yo i'm blind i show up and i feel this thing that I, 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 you just spit on me and everybody was like whoa did you because there were people around there had to have been one person who'd be like did he just spit on the guy? But, but, but notice, Jesus spits on him and says, can you see? And I want you to see what happens in the scripture. Because the man says, no. In, in, my, in my translation, the man says, no, not really. C can we be honest? C when I read this, I'm like, this dude really didn't go to church much. Because it's like, Church is like 1245 and pastor is preaching and he says, I got one more point. Can I share it with you? And the people say, yes, but in reality, you're like, no, no. Okay. You ever been to church and, and somebody says, oh, I feel the spirit and the presence of God and all the person is thinking, I just feel hot or hungry. You, you never been to a church service where everybody's feeling in the, the Holy Ghost is here and you're just like, we're. Oh, have you ever seen these crusades or something where, where, you know, somebody says like, are you feeling the fire now? So, so this is like the picture that I get in my mind. And clearly I'm thinking, this dude is honest. I want you to see that it's possible that he probably was not like a good portion of Christians today when it comes to being before Jesus. Because a lot of us are not honest before Jesus. Jesus just spit on him and touched him and and he says can you see and and the guy says no i want you to understand why honesty with jesus is important because he would have missed the next half of his miracle if he wasn't honest about his condition reverend lorraine sang a song what is it called if i can be honest if we're honest he he was honest are you comfortable about telling jesus the whole truth you know have you ever listened to some people pray and thought 
oh, it's kind of boring. Why? Because you can tell it's not honest. I'm not saying you don't mean what you're saying. But, 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 but if we were to be honest with Jesus, there are some salacious, some sensational, some like some stuff that, that, that other people would want to listen to. What? You're going through? What? No? But, but we don't talk to Jesus like that. Omnipotent, most suffering, awesome, most wonderful. Thou who art amazing. Thou who didst create me. You are so wonderful. I thank you for this wonderful day that thou has made and that I'm alive. Help me to be a blessing to many. When in reality... In about 20 minutes, you go into a job that you wish you didn't have to go to. And people are going to talk to you. Somebody's going to touch you that you just think, oh, God. I'm, I'm at, no? Okay. Sometimes we're praying and God is saying, when are we really going to talk? Like, like when, am I, when are we, God's like, when are we going to get to the real stuff? Yes, yes, I know. I bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, I know. I, I'm keeping you. Yeah, I know I'm good to you. But like, can we really talk? Talk about the fact that you're really mad at me. You're frustrated that I'm holding up what you want because I'm trying to do an inward work in you. When are we going to talk about how frustrated you are, how impatient you are? When are we going to talk about how annoyed you are? When are we going to talk about your doubt, your self-doubt, your struggles? This man knew God knows his heart, so he pours out his heart to Jesus. And notice what happens in, in verse 25. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Notice the honesty before. And then once more, Jesus put his hands on his eyes. Then his eyes were opened. And what happened? His sight was restored and he saw everything how clearly. It's amazing what honesty with Jesus will do for us. After this touch, he sees everything clearly. But let me tell you something. Jesus spat on him the first time, but not the second time. Here's what I'm saying to you. The first time, he got better, but not whole. I'm saying to you that God's not okay with you just being better. He wants you to be whole. He's trying to get your position so he can touch you. He was better, but he wasn't whole. He was better, but he was not as good as he was going to be. So, so, so if you've watched the Maury Povich show, you'll figure out that saliva can be used to determine DNA. No? Okay. Or, or in other words, saliva can be used to determine who your daddy is. So, so Jesus, I want you to hear me. And, and you might say this is a stretch, but I don't think so. Jesus is spitting can be seen as a transfer of DNA. Jesus' spitting can be seen as a regeneration, as being born again. In other words, it's like we get saved, but we're not, we, we, we get saved, so, so we get better, but we're not whole. We still need a touch from Jesus. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. You see, you see because, because Jesus could spit on him from afar. But in order for Jesus to touch him, he had to be close. So God is saying, I can spit on you, get you saved. But I want you to be whole. In order to be whole, you got to come close enough so that I can touch you. And I hear Jesus calling us into closeness with him. Did you notice that Jesus does things in stages? Listen to the lesson. Some things in our lives happen in multiple, with multiple touches. Relax. Relax. Some things are happening in stages. But pastor, I'm getting old. Relax. Stages. But pastor, the creditors are calling. Stages. Pastor, I'm going to bankruptcy court. Stages. You remember? Who's going to be sovereign? But pastor, the kids, stages, who's going to be sovereign? Because when God transformed these children that you're praying about, and they become model children, can you handle model children? You, you're praying, God, change my children. Bless my children, make them smart. Can you really handle smart children? Or will you tell them, can you stop talking? I don't want to know what atoms and molecules. I'm just saying. 
So, so whilst you're praying, God's preparing you. Is, is it too simple? Are you, are, you, are you grasping those of you that are here? Are you grasping what I'm saying? So, yeah, you still have issues, but God, God's working in stages. You still have issues. doesn't mean that God didn't touch you. What you need to learn to do is to exercise faith that will hold you in between touches. Vision for your life takes time to come to pass. Do you remember, let's look at Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. Most of us know this passage. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Remember that, an appointed time. But at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, what? Wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. I want you to pay attention to what it says. An appointed time. Do you see that? But did you notice the text does not give the time of the appointment? Sometimes we're asking God when, and he says, the appointed time. Be satisfied and content in the fact that you've got an appointment. There is an appointment date for the children to turn around. There's an appointment date to get out of debt. There's an appointment date for your healing. There's an appointment date for your answer. Because sometimes we're asking God when, and he says, the appointed time. But notice it also says, it shall, not, it shall speak and not lie. It shall speak and it will not lie. This is a profound truth. Here's what it's saying. When it happens, the manifestation of it will not be inconsistent with the declaration that I made at the beginning. In other words, whatever I showed you at the beginning is what it will be or even greater at the end. In other words, Joseph, if I showed you 11 sheaves bowing down, I promise you, Joseph, all 11 will bow down. It says, do it tarry. Not if <laughs> it will tarry. Though it tarries, because God is a God, you see, where there's great potential, there's great preparation. And so because God is preparing you to maximize your potential, some things that you're believing for will tarry. It will linger. Wait for it. It will surely come. That's why children go to school. That's why school is important. If you're in elementary school or high school, you're thinking, what's the point? It's not that important. You're learning this lesson. Preparation. Being on time. Delivering work on time. Am I, am I making sense? All that discipline is important. But notice what he says. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. In other words, it will not tarry at the end. is connected to the appointed time. It will not tarry because it has an appointed time. It has to come. So be of good faith. Be of good cheer. Be encouraged. It's coming. In other words, God is saying, what is a delay to you is not a delay to me. When God says it's time, it's time. When God said it's time for that door to open, believe you me, that door will have no choice but to swing open. In other words, when it's like God is saying, Jonah, when I speak to that fish, it must do what I say, and it has to do it when I say it. So the vision for your life may be delayed, but keep believing you are in between touches. Ask God to give you faith for the middle how to finish well let me give you three points and we'll wrap this up how to finish well number one are we still together number one how to finish well number one stay connected with people of faith stay connected with people of faith how to finish well stay connected with people of faith i didn't just say people people of faith do you know that even in this COVID age, have you, have you noticed that a lot of people are losing faith, losing purpose, losing vision in, the, in this COVID? Because we are not choosing to stay connected with people of faith. This man had issues. He was going through stuff. But he had people of faith in his life that he stayed connected with. Take me back to the passage at the very beginning. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man. 
He had people of faith that he was connected with. This man kept relationships. He had a circle of people in his life that gave him help, not just company. So are the people in your life helping you? Or are, they keep, are, they, are, are, are they helping you or are they just company? Listen to me carefully, especially, now everybody, I want you to hear this, but young people, you get to learn some things. You get to know some things so that you don't have to go through some things. But have you noticed some people prefer to go through things rather than learn things nowadays? Let me tell you something. Let, let, let me tell you something. You, you, in, in life, you don't go as far as your dream. You go as far as your team. Your team, who, who you're surrounding with. You need a network. You need people who's poor, pouring into you. You need people uh, 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 that you are doing life with. And you need people that you are pouring into. That's a good team. You don't go as far as your dream. You go as far as your team. You, the, 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 the direction and the quality of your life is not just determined by who you are and what you can do. It is equally determined by who you are with. Now let me give you my grandmother's translation of that one. Show me your friends. I'll tell you who you are and where you'll end up. That's what old people used to say. All birds are fed up. We become like who we walk with. That's why your parents was concerned about your friends. Because your friends tell them <laughs> what you're going to. How you going to end up. When you get the clear picture of what God wants to do in you, for you, and through you, you will realize you cannot fulfill your life assignment by yourself. Don't live life on your own. I can just pray in my corner. What? Why are you missing prayer meeting? That's, that's ungodly. A pastor, I pray. Yeah, but, but you need to be able to pray with. I don't have to go to church. What? If you can't fulfill your life assignment, your vision by yourself, it came from you, not from God. Me, myself, and Irene is very ungodly. Whatever God calls you to is bigger than you. This man had people that took him to Jesus. Do you have people in your life who knows where to take you when you lose your sight? Do you have people in your life who knows where to take you when you lose perspective? Do you have people in your life who know where to take you when you lose your passion or your direction? Stay connected with people of faith. Because some people will take you places, but are they taking you to the places that would help restore your sight? Or are they taking you to places that will only help you forget that you are blind? Yeah, I know. Oh, we, we hang out. We have fun. Yeah. So, so are you closer to your vision or, or did it just forget you got issues? And by the way, somebody says, I'm okay with forgetting that I have issues. Well, my God, may God help you. Because you can actually get over the issues and forget that you had them. You need people in your life who love you enough. Listen to me carefully. You need people in your life who love you enough to not experiment with your life with their unproven opinions. Hmm. Well, I think, uh-huh. You should, mm-hmm. Is that proven? Look at your life. By the way, why we follow people whose lives are no better? If all of you are sitting, you know what, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to keep going. Because if you can comfortably talk about your sin and all your struggles and somebody should say, wait a minute, we need help. You need people who, if they can't help you, will get you somebody who can do for you what they cannot do for you. The old people call that, and the Bible supports it, intercessors. People who stand in the gap. You know, one of the things, you hear me talk about the women's ministry industry all the time. Now, of course, men can pray. I, I, you know, maybe I need deliverance on that. But man, I tell you, I, I, I've heard men pray. And I know men pray. And I know when we pray, we're powerful. But, but when some women pray, I got to keep a notepad to keep track of the prayer stuff. When, 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 when you tell Sister Natalie your prayer request, Lord Jesus... Three years later, we run into you. Oh, so remember we were praying about, did, how do you remember that? 
I, you get what I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being sexist or whatever the word is. I don't know. Maybe it's wrong, but I'm just saying it's, it's a clear difference that I've noticed. Is that okay? That's what works for me. I'm not, I'm not putting men against women. Am I making sense? What I'm saying to you is you need intercessors in your life. You need people who will stand in the gap because the people that brought this man to Jesus were believing Jesus for his healing. As a matter of fact, you remember Mary and Martha? Well, in a way, they had that kind of spirit because they were saying, even though Lazarus can't speak for himself, we are coming on his behalf, Jesus. You need people like that in your life. When you can speak for yourself, you know that you know that somebody's praying for you. Some of us are only standing today because somebody went to Jesus on our behalf and that person kept going to God until he brought us to our senses and got us out of our silly seasons. I know that's why I'm here. If you blessed by anything that happens in this church under my leadership, it's because there is some Sister Lee and Sister James and Mother Tenny who prays. Am I making sense? People who prayed that God will restore us and help us recover from our mistakes. We need those people in our lives. Let me give you number two. Stay connected with people of faith. Number two, separate yourself when prompted to. We're talking about finishing well. It's not a dance and a shout. Whether you finish good or not, you should still dance and shout because God is still good. Amen. But, but I, I want you to be genuinely rejoicing. Separate yourself when prompted to. Jesus did something wonderful in this man's life. And here's what he says in Mark chapter 8. So, so separate yourself when prompted to. Mark chapter 8 verse 26. Jesus sent him away saying, don't go back into the village on your way home. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I heard the Holy Spirit saying to somebody today, don't, don't, don't call back. Don't respond. Don't answer. Don't look. Listen, I don't know. Maybe this man's environment was a distraction. Listen, there, there are some things, there are some people, there are some places. They're not destructive, but they're distracting. Am I making sense? And, 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 and by the way, that means that that distancing that you're feeling in the relationship, the fact that you were even fired, the conflict in the relationship may well be God prompting you to a separation. Because God will at times lead you out of things and places that are distracting. God will, at times, lead you out of things and places that are distracting. But pastor, life is good. I have, is it distracting you? That's why I encourage my young people. Don't date people who don't practice spiritual disciplines of prayer and worship and Bible reading and church attendance and financial stewardship. Don't. Because whilst it may seem good, you get distracted. Because their priorities are out of line. Now, now I get it. Separation is tough. Sometimes we get so comfortable where we are and who we are with. But because Jesus has a different destination planned for us, he'll put distance between us and some people or some things and some places. He'll pull us out of our comfort zones and lead us into his plans for us. Do you remember when God tried to separate Moses from some people that should be out of his life? And Moses prayed that God would keep in his life the people who God wanted out. Moses thought he needed who he did not need. Can I say this again? Moses thought he needed who he did not need. If you think you need them, guess what? You don't, baby. As a matter of fact, if any can I can I let me, if anybody makes you feel like you need them, there's something wrong with that. And if you feel like you need people, there is room at the cross for you. The, the point is, if you feel like you you, you need a touch, be, be, uh, am I making sense? No, no, don't, don't go talking about like, I don't need, that's not what I said. You get, put it in context. What we need, who we need is God. 
And when God puts people in our lives, they don't make you feel like you need them. As a matter of fact, wherever God is, there is always liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Now, you may find some accountability, but don't confuse the two. Moses had to learn from experience what God wanted to teach him through instruction. Let me give you number three. Stay spiritually stubborn. Stay connected, separate yourself, and stay spiritually stubborn. Stay spiritually stubborn. Notice Jesus asked the man, are you seeing anything? I find it, it's interesting that Jesus didn't say to him, you all right? Are you okay? How do you feel? Because had Jesus asked him that, the man could have said, I'm good. I, I, I could not see at all, so at least now I see a little bit. I'll take good. I, this really, this blessed me so much. I, I, I really, the perspectives we have of God, because sometimes I've been there. I talk about he wants to bless us exceedingly, abundantly. And, and sometimes the Lord reminds me, why, why are you settling for good? You know when that happens to me most? When there's a price to pay for me to get better. And I'm like, God, I'll take good. I'm just being honest with you. Too many of us are good with good when better is possible. At least somebody likes me. Well, I, 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 I can't preach on these things because I'm just like, what? Like, somebody likes you so, so. Like, please. So somebody likes you, so you're just going to date them because they, 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 they want you. Do you know who you are? Do you know how valuable you are? So what if somebody likes you? Many people should like you. You get what I'm saying? So you get to choose. And I don't mean any, mini mind. They want me like choose. Like make them catch up to you. And then be like, okay. You got stamina. You got strength. You, you can't keep up. All right, I choose you. What happens is we, we, we see people and they're like, okay, well, you're going to slow me down a little bit. But I guess eventually we'll get there. So yeah, we can try to make it. If we move this, we do that. We'll make it work. And God's like, no. You could have had the job or the career that you wanted, but you wanted money now. You didn't want to do school. Oh, no, not another three years. Oh, God, no. I got plans. I got, I got to have the kid by this. I got, no, no, no. So I'm just going to take this. At least I'll have a career. And I've seen people like that, and then I hear them uh, getting stressed out when their kids are just not doing well in school. I'm like, what did you do? What, what dreams would you have for yourself that you're trying to make sure your kids do that you didn't do? It's so better to show them because you can teach what you know, but you reproduce who you are. Have you ever noticed that? Selfish. Don't confuse settling with contentment. Do not confuse pursuing greatness with greed. No, no, no. Let me be clear when I talk about spiritually stubborn. I, you know, I love everybody who's connected to this church, but I know that there are there's a section who recognize Pastor Joel as their pastor. So those are the people that I'm speaking to because I, I get to speak into your life. I'm not, you know, these people. Everybody's like watching stuff. I'm speaking to those. I'm your pastor, and if 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 what I'm saying blesses you, and I'm not your pastor, then praise Jesus. But, but let me say something to some of my people because I know my people. Okay, God brought us together for a reason. He put you under this leadership. He gave, gave me the ability to, 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 to shepherd you. And I know that some of my people are stubborn. Some of my people are just naturally stubborn. So you see this and you're like, yep, that's why. No, let me, let me be very clear. There is natural stubbornness and there is spiritual stubbornness. 
Natural stubbornness says, I won't quit till I have my own way. I won't quit till I get it and give God the credit for it. <laughs> Spiritual stubbornness says, I won't quit till God has his way. That's what I'm talking about. Spiritual stubbornness says, I got a picture of God's preferred plans for my life and I will be stubborn about what I see. Yes, I will cry when disappointment comes, but I will get up and pursue it again. Yes, I may fail, but I will get up and pursue it again. Spiritual stubbornness says, I will say like Jacob, I will not let you go until you bless me. Why? Because God is faithful to finish what he has started. How to finish well? Stay connected with people of faith. How do you do that? Start by coming to prayer meetings, Bible study, attending church, getting into the stuff. That's how you build relationships. Don't expect people to like you the moment they see you. That's not always possible. Not everybody's called Sister Natalie. I'm just joking. But you get what I'm saying? So you come to the prayer. You build relationships, and we talk, and, and then before too long, you're like, yeah. You wake up in the morning, and you don't even feel like going to church, but because you know Sister Samantha is going to be there, you're like, well, Sam said she's going, so I'm going to go. You get what I'm saying? It, relationship. God uses that. Stay connected with people of faith. Talk about our struggles. Don't let your feelings guide you. They're deceptive. Oftentimes. Separate yourself when prompted to. That may not be easy. But get help with doing that. Sometimes it's a thing. So, you know, there's a season. God will call you to separate yourself from Instagram. God may call you to separate yourself from Facebook. I don't know. But it could be people. It could be a place. Not Shiloh. God will never tell you to separate yourself from Shiloh. If I don't tell you to separate yourself from Shiloh, no. And then stay spiritually stubborn. Once you've gotten that picture of God's preferred plans for your life, pursue it. Don't give up on it. Let's stand. I did tell you we're ending on time today. Remember last week? No, you don't. It was that good, huh? <laughs> the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You know what they said again? The proper time. Don't stop praying for the children. Let us not become weary in doing good. Don't stop reading the scriptures. Don't stop studying the word. Don't stop worshiping. Don't stop giving. Don't stop loving. Don't let us not become weary in doing good. Because at the proper time, if you don't stop praying for the kids, I promise you, at one time, you'll reap a harvest. If you don't stop keeping God at the center of your life, there's a harvest. And the thing with God, he get, you know we have a harvest season every year. So it's not a one-time harvest. God has many harvests for us. I want you to get this picture in your mind. Paul said this. Paul says, I have finished the race. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I had to finish well. That's a picture of a man who finished well. I finished the race. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. My prayer is that we would be like Paul. But let me tell you something. Two things I noticed here. Paul had to endure and he had to persevere. In other words, he had to stand firm and he had to keep moving. And that's what the Christian life is about. We're standing firm whilst we're moving. Finishing the race, keeping the faith, fighting the good fight whilst we're standing on the truth of Jesus Christ. That what God has started, he will finish. I don't care what area of life you're talking about. What God has started, he will finish. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Whatever you get God involved in, he will bring to a good end. But, but pastor, I know that I started a marriage my own way. I know that I went about having children my own way. You get God involved. He's the God of restoration. You get him involved, he'll bring it to a good end because he created you with plans. 
Pastor, I've messed myself up financially. I've messed up my character. You get God involved. You'll have a good end. Do you receive that in Jesus' name? This man had friends that brought him because Jesus was passing by. I believe that we normally have a time of prayer and I, I, I left it intentionally for this time. So those of you that are here and even those of you that are watching, would you bow your heads and, 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 and in this moment, Jesus is passing by. If you are not born again, if you have not become a part of the family of God, he's inviting you to become a part of God's family. He's inviting you to get the right vision for your life. He's saying, accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. For those of us that are born again, he's saying, I, I still want to bless you. I still got plans. I got a plan that you would finish well. Will you trust me? I'll get you through those sin struggles, but will you trust me? I'm able to handle your fears. Will you trust me? For some of us right now, this is a moment and a time to be honest. But I trust that you were blessed by today's message. He's able. We'll finish well. <laughs> not only we're going to finish but we'll finish well but father we need you like 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 the old people used to say god do not do not pass us by give someone a beseda encounter today give someone divine enablement unmerited unearned ability give somebody grace to finish well grace to stay the course god restore some things to somebody today restore somebody's sight help somebody to see again where where they lost vision and god i pray that you'll open the eyes of the one who has no vision for their life so that we will all use our years with clarity and boldness. Pursuing your perfect will for us. God, may we settle for nothing less than your best. And Father, heal us from weariness. Ha! Oh God, heal us from weariness. Oh God, heal us from weariness. Heal us from where we become familiar with you. Heal us from weariness and familiarity. Heal us, God. We've become so weary, we're no longer honest. We've become so familiar, we're no longer honest with you. Heal us, God, from where we've become religious. Heal us. And give us finishing grace. Finishing faith. Give us grace for the middle and faith for the middle. For some of us are in between touches, but we are believing you today, God, for a new touch. We don't just want to be saved. We want to be whole. We don't just want good. We want better. And some of us are going for best. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> My God. So as these folks would lay hands and pray for the people in a matter of time, I pray that you would work through them. I pray even for Brother Hector, God, that even as he would minister out of a place of favor, that you would touch his heart. He's not here by accident today. God, touch him. Touch that family. Hey, my God, my God. You are true. You are. Hallelujah. 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 You finish what you start. You finish what you start. You finish what you start hey god so finish 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 some things for that family finish some things for that family finish some things well for that family in jesus name oh god oh hallelujah Woo. Hallelujah. Mm, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. 
Halleluja. Mm. Halleluja. Finish what you started. And remind us that you are the God who finishes. Somebody's believing you for their children. God, you are the God who finished what you started. And nobody can make a baby. We, some people do things that cause them to have babies. But you are the one who gives life. So finish what you started. Somebody's got an education situation. Finish what you started. Somebody's got a health problem. You give us life. Finish what you started. Somebody's got a money problem. Bring them to a good end. My God, my God. Ooh, Jesus. Doesn't matter how bad it looks. Doesn't matter how long it's been. You are a good finisher. You're a good finisher. You're a good finisher. You're a good finisher. You're a good finisher.